In this tutorial, we'll be playing around with Typeflow and disintegrating stuff. The best thing here is that even if you never used Typeflow before, you should be able to easily follow the steps and harness the power of destruction. Alright, so let's get into 3ds Max. Here you can see we've already got a simple scene prepared with our main asset loaded. The first thing we're going to do is create a new type of object. Uh, so we'll open the editor and now what we're going to do is move the geometry into type flow. So let's just create a birth objects operator. We will want to birth the object just once. So let's just leave the default frame birth at zero. Then let's pick our asset and we can already hide it from the viewport in Max since it will be already loaded into type flow. Now what we want to do here is to fracture the object into smaller pieces. So let's go with the tab key, which will allow you to search for operators and let's type face fracture to add the operator. For the geometry, we will go with polygons and increase the max faces per fracture to something like 120. And since we want to have a lot more randomness, let's increase the variations to around 80. Next, we'll want to add some thickness to the object. So let's go with tab again and type shell which will add the shell operator, similar to Max's shell modifier. As you can see, there's already a lot of geometry protruding, so let's just remove the outer shell, which we're not gonna need, and just leave only the inner mount set to something small like 0.2. Now we'll need some trigger that will initiate the whole effect. So first, let's add a surface test operator. And here we'll need an object to test for the distance. So let's go ahead and create a dummy. But here, since we won't be able to load the helper into Typeflow, we'll need some proper geometry in Max. But for starters, let's just animate the dummy to move towards the character and touch it at some point. Set the keyframes for frame 20 and then back to frame 0 so that the helper is animated. And now let's just create a sphere, center it on the dummy and link both objects. And now as you can see, we've got both the helper and the sphere moving, so that's gonna be like our trigger. Moving back to Typeflow, we'll add the sphere to the surface test operator. And at this point, we can either make the sphere non-renderable or just hide it. Because we'll still have the dummy visible for reference. Alright, and now we'll need to move the particles from the surface test operator to a new particle group. Let's go with tab again to search and type particle group. We'll set the particles to group number two now and link those two events. And now when we move the animation forward, you can see that the particles are switched between groups uh, when the trigger sphere moves in. Now we'll see that there's nothing really going on past frame 20, so we'll need to cover that and propagate the particles further on the character. We'll handle that with a property test operator, which will set to tests for neighbors with values greater than what we set in the absolute radius. We will set it to 3 for now, but later we might need to alter the value depending on whether we get all the particles added to the group or not. One less important thing, we need to switch the test to the new simulation group and now just link the property test to the new event and let's just see how it works now. Now when we move forward on the timeline, you should see the polygons are picked up in the new group. Uh, though here you can see that the propagation kind of stops at some point, so we'll need to change the radius value for the property test. Uh, let's try and go some higher value since, as you can see here, some particles are skipped in the process. I think for now we could go with a value of 5, because that seems to pick up all the polygons, and maybe just use a retimer for the simulation if we feel that it's going too fast. Alright, so now we'll need to add some force, which will influence and move the polygons. So let's go ahead and add a wind force, and position the vector towards the character. 
that's basically the direction our particles will fly away. Okay, so now back to type flow, we'll need to add a force operator. We can go with add selected here, since we already have the wind selected. And now going forward on the timeline, you can see that we've got all the particles from the second event just flying away. As you can see, it's probably happening a little bit too fast, but we'll just handle that later. Uh, then we can add some randomness to the motion by adding some turbulence to the wind force. And here you can basically just experiment freely, uh, depending on how you want the uh, particles to fly away. We can also add some rotation and spin to the movement. So let's just go ahead and search for the operators. And first let's go with a rotation operator. Um, here you might need to decrease the interpolation value a bit so that the particles just don't rotate like crazy. Then we can also add a spin operator. Um, set it to something like 80, which is... 80 degrees rotation per second, plus some variation. And now we should be getting some additional movement and randomness in the particles. The last thing we might consider in this solver is to have some of the particles disintegrate into smaller parts after flying away for a while. To handle that, we'll create a time test that will check for particles after a particular number of frames. And here let's set it to something like 15 frames uh, with some variation. Now we'll create a new event with a split operator. So let's say we'll go with, with a random chance and divide the particles to 3 fourths, so it's like 75%. And this event is going to be affected by the same force, so we can just shift and drag the operator to copy it, or we could also do it with right click and copy paste, or alternatively paste it as an instance. Once we have the particles split up, we can take that 75% and fracture them with a Voronoi Fracture Operator and set it to some distinct colors so we can see where are they appearing. We might also want to gradually decrease the scale of the polygons, so let's go with a scale operator set to relative multiply and the value set to something like 98%. This way the particles will be continuously scaled down. We can go with some final fracturing and disintegrate the particles even more and we'll start by adding a time test to the previous event. Then we'll copy the event that has a Voronoi fracture and link it to the time test. Same as before, we'll give it a vivid color and if we take a closer look here, there's just a few particles in this event but for our needs that's totally fine. If you have a base plane like in our scene, you might consider also adding a, a collision operator. As you can see in our example, the particles are just flying away, but we want to just stop them before they reach the base plane. So let's just go to Typeflow and add a collision operator and just propagate it to each event and just add the base plane to the operator. And now you see the particles are just stopping and hitting the, the back plate. And now with all that done, we can refine the simulation a bit. And for instance, if we feel that the simulation is going too fast, we can go back to the title object, go to retimer and enable simulation retimer. And now we can set it by speed to something like 70% of the original simulation speed. And here maybe the wind force is also too high since the particles are just flying away like crazy. So we could decrease the wind strength to like 0.5. Alright, and yeah, already it's looking pretty cool. Now we'll just add a camera and apply a material to the character. And now something you might have seen in our animation, the character had different material on the inside than on the outside. And we can easily achieve that by going back to type flow, to the first event, and in the shell operator here under mat ID, we'll need to select all the checkboxes. For the outer material, we'll go with an ID of 1, and for the inner and edge materials, we'll give it a different ID, so let's just go with 2. Now we'll apply a material to the Typeflow object. Uh, we've already got this multi sub object material ready. It's got a white reflective shader under ID 1 and a gold metallic material under ID 2. And if you zoom into the particles, you can see the different materials in the viewport. Now we'll just unhide our scene lights, and to get the whole type of simulation rendered out, you will either need to cache it via the export particles operator, 
or add a mesh operator to each event. And now we can easily render out your simulation with any render engine. I hope you liked the video and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss on the next Typhlo tutorial which is coming pretty soon to our channel.